What's going on guys? Time for an update video. Before we get into the TA, I want to talk about a few things. Um, number one, I'm going to start with this. Nothing I say is financial advice. I want everyone to understand that. I want everyone to understand, um, you know, I'm in the same boat as you. We want the same outcome. We have a singular goal. That's why we're here. And I want you to also understand that the people, the group, um, on the other side of this trade is Wall Street, our government, the elites of Western society. Um, someone needs to pay us. And that's, at the end of the day, those are gonna be the people paying us. And with that being said, we're playing a game of psychological warfare. And it's not by accident, it's by design. It's retail exhaustion. It's meant, it's meant to make you fed up. It's meant to make you want to get out of the play. You know, just wipe your hands and say, oh, I'm done with this, I've had enough of this. That's the whole point. Um, so, you know, with that being said, Thursday was a very unfortunate day. And, you know, I've been saying for some time now that we are in a complete bullshit market. You know, I don't know if, if Thursday's earnings wasn't enough. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, we could just really quickly run down the list and we'll start with best quarterly earnings all time for AMC. Um, Kroger, Publix, Amazon, Sports, um, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, I'm probably missing stuff, the writer strike, um, and then minus 20%. It's by design. It's by design. It's meant to make you fed up. It's retail exhaustion 101, building up emotions to then crush them and, and put you in a place of, you know, all right, I've had enough here. That's the whole point. And with that being said, we can now really quickly get into the TA. And this scenario, if you will, was projected months ago. Um, I don't think I ever shared it in a video, unfortunately, because I didn't think it was likely. But we spoke about this in um, at great, great length in Discord. And I want, I want to just start with that and cover that and the scenario that we were projecting. This was months ago, you know, September, talking about what just happened, you know, last week. Um, so this was not, you know, we weren't blindsided. It's just an unfortunate event. So we'll start with, we'll start with this and I, I want to cover this really quick. This is September 27th, 2023. I'm cautiously optimistic because I 1000% see the case for this being the beginning of the flat portion. Even though I think it's unlikely, does not mean it can't happen. Um, and then I posted this chart. It's really just based off levels and nothing more. And again, September 27th, zooming into the, the actual chart that I posted there, here it is. Um, and before we even get into the scenario, I want, I want to say something else where AMC's macro uh, is brutal. It's a brutal macro to track. Um, it's a brutal macro to be a long investor in because the bull cycle portion of AMC's macro is it's very rapid, especially the previous one that we saw, the January, June um, other than the upside that you get, the brief upside, the rest of AMC's macro is downside, is this descending wedge. Um, it's January 15th over and over again. And at and January 15th, if you've been paying attention, it always comes to a point. And you can call it a volatility point, a breaking point, a point where the, the micro fractal comes to an end and that breaking point leads you either to a, a micro fractal in an uptrend or a continuation of micro fractal in a downtrend. Um, the last one that we tracked before this one was July. So right here, tracking all this price action leading up to the gap up in July. Remember calling for that, uh, calling for that gap up. This is the gap up we're looking for that whole time. 
So we get to January 15th end of day, we get the break, we break to the upside, it fails, and then we knife. Continuation of fractal in a downtrend. And then the same thing in the, the current scenario, from the bottom, 705, climbing, uptrend, up to a point, January 15th end of day, uh, looking for the break now, looking for a break to the upside, we broke to the downside once again. Before that was April, right here, Here's your uptrend, January 15th, end of day, looking for the break, breaks to the downside. Um, my, point, my point here being is that we're tracking this. AMC's macro, it, the way it works in the downtrend is January 15th comes to that breaking point and it breaks to the, down, the, 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 the downside over and over and over again. So comes to a point, breaks to the downside, uptrend up to a point, breaks to the downside, Uptrend up to a point, breaks to the downside. Uptrend up to a point, breaks to the downside. Over and over again, until you get to that point where it breaks to the upside. And at that point, that is where you get your squeeze. When January 15th, end of day, breaks to the upside, you're no longer a microfractal in a downtrend, you are now in an uptrend, that, that upside break is what takes you into the squeeze. That's what we've been looking for this entire time. The whole time, we're, we're just waiting for that upside break out of January 15th. Now, getting back to this, this chart I put together pretty much right when we came down to 705. It was probably like a week or a week and a half in where I was like, all right, you know, I, I definitely see the case here. I think it's unlikely, but there is a case for it um, where this knife that we saw in July was actually this knife right here. Um, coming down to the flat portion where you just start the flat the flat portion and then you squeeze. So this was not, we weren't blindsided by this. It was unfortunate, it's a bummer, um, but it is what it is. So, and here it is again, I kind of drew like a projection. This is a crayon chart, you know, take with a grain of salt. But again, pretty much showing here where this July knife uh, this July knife would have actually been the start of the flat portion, and now we'd be looking for all this movement, which is what I drew here. Um, <clears throat> so that's where we are, and you know, there's there's two scenarios with this. Before we get into it, I want to start with the actual macro perspective itself because I threw this together a little nicer. The levels here. Um, was it really this simple the entire time? It was nothing but levels. I guess uh, it doesn't change anything about like the fractal analysis or anything. We're still going to be looking for that January 15th end of day, the end of day break uh, off the V. But the levels of AMC's macro are pretty much spot on, uh, even where you drop to the flat portion. I'll just really quickly go through it. So all the macro stuff is the same from IPO. This original peak here is your January equivalent. Um, and then you get into the June, the V shape, your macro break here, and then you get into the downtrend. So again, uh, in the, the current iteration, the current macro, the January, the June, uh, the flag, the macro break, and then you get into the downtrend. And it's pretty much from the same level on both sides. The current macro is a little bit higher. The next macro will be higher than that. Um, but you get the point. So dropping through this first level, at $105, roughly. So dropping through it here, dropping through it here, you climb back out up to this point, you climb back out up to this point. And it's pretty much all the same levels. Uh, and then you knife through that again, and then you knife through it again, down to the green, and then up, and then up, and then again down to this orange dotted line, that little V bounce that you see there, pretty much in the exact same spot as this. Off the V here, bounce up back over the green, and then fall through again, you fall through again, and then you establish a port on top of the blue, and then you eventually break through the blue down to the flat portion. You're breaking down pretty much from the same price here, from the same price here, from the same price here, and the yellow and the green, even the all-time highs, you're pretty much, the levels here are all pretty much the same. The January equivalent, pretty much the same level. Um, and now we're at the flat portion. So. It makes sense, you know, landmark wise, that, that sharp knife in July, well, when you're looking at the macro, really it could have only been one thing. And this is why I had, I threw this perspective together in September. Um, 
although I thought it was unlikely, you know, again, we're not being blindsided here. This was a projected scenario. We just thought it was very unlikely, but here we are. So knifing down here is the start of the flat portion and that's where we are now. And we have to play out the whole flat portion all over again. Um, basically like we did here, this whole January, 2023, all of this uh, to the end, to this break here, um, we were looking for the break up here in July and then drop through and now the flat portion again, and now we have to play it out again. Um, there are two possible scenarios here when you're looking at this on the micro now where we could possibly be. Um, so you can even see it here where you get the double peak move and then down the double peak move and now we'd be coming down to $7. This would be the best case scenario. There's also a scenario where we would still be in this W, the first W here, and we'd be looking for all of this price action still. Um, that would suck. You know, that I don't think is likely either, but I'll, I'll cover both of the possible scenarios now in the micro. So again, what we're looking at now is the drop to the flat portion, the flat portion into the squeeze, and then we're gonna be looking at the same thing, the drop to the flat portion, and now we're playing it out side by side. So here it is. So here's January dropping to the flat portion. Here is the current cycle dropping to the flat portion. This is the best case scenario right now. Um, for AMC. And before I even start really going over this, I want everyone to understand something. This stock is not going to just magically squeeze one day. Um, the, it, my point is it's, it's not going to be random. It's going to be at one of those January 15th breaking points like we just saw here off the, off the V, we were looking for a break to the upside. Uh, instead, breaking to the downside, this is continuation of fractal and a downtrend. Um, we're looking for a January 15th end of day that breaks to the upside and that will be taking us into our squeeze. So this is the best case scenario for AMC right now, where we would have already played out all of this, the chop here at the bottom of the first W, which would have been this, and then up to the top, the double peak move, you get the cup here, a higher peak on the right. So you get the cup here, a higher peak on the right, and now we would be in the process of coming down to your second bottom. Um, before we do that, we should see a bounce up to 890. Uh, in either scenario, we're gonna be looking for a bounce to 890, relatively short term to reject the previous resistance here, or support, the previous support here, having now fell through it, we, uh, it's just a, a technical move, but it's also the tracking we're looking for. We should now come up and test the bottom of this previous support, but now it will be acting as resistance up to 890, where we then reject and then come down to roughly 710 to 730. Again, this is the best case scenario. Um, you know, so we'd be looking for a bounce up here down to 730. We play out the tri peak, which would take us back to the $9 range. Um, play out the tri peak uh, again. A knife down to this to the the bottom here, which would probably be somewhere around six eighty to seven to, to let's just say six seventy five to seven dollars would be the third bottom, and then again the uptrend January fifteenth, looking for the break to the upside. Um, the that would be the best case scenario, and the the timeline for this. I'm not let's not even get into dates, but just timeline would be somewhere between, I would say January, February range, uh, where the rest of November and December, we would be playing out uh, the rest of this downside to the second bottom, the rest of the tri peak, and then coming down to your third bottom, that would probably be taking us somewhere around January, and then the January, February uptrend, and then the, the break into the squeeze. The worst case scenario is this, where the dropping down to, the, to the, the flat portion now, we would still be in this first iteration of W here, the first segment right here at the bottom. Um, so here's knifing down, you bounce off the trend, bounce off the trend, knife even more, bounce off the trend, bounce off the trend, and then you start playing out this choppy W section, two pokes above it, two pokes above it, knife back under, we would be right here. So right here, knifing back underneath and then looking for the rest of this chop. Um, granted, this scenario would have a lot more action because we would be expecting a move to 40 to 
once the rest of this would play out, we'd be expecting a move up to $40, $50 uh, to get the double top move, which then would, would reject and then come all the way back down to seven and then up to 30 and then down to seven and then you go. This would push us out a very long time, probably a year. Um, I don't think this is likely. That would be very unfortunate if it was. I don't think it's likely. I think the likely scenario here is um, is the first one that I showed here, where we would be just coming down from the second peak here, now looking for the bounce up to 890, this landmark right here, and then a knife to 710 to 730 range. Um, this is the scenario I'm leading for now. We'll keep. I'm just going to keep updating both until until one is. Um, you could just completely rule it out. Um, for this scenario, and I know this might sound a little hypocritical, but we don't want to see anything past $12. Because if we do see price action past $12, that means that we're heading for $40 to $50. And that means this is going to push us out a while. Granted, you could play the swing uh, contracts, the ups and downs of it, you could play and, and that would be very profitable. But that would push us out a very long time until the actual squeeze. Um, just talking about market synchronization and wh where the market is a, as in general, this scenario where it would take another year is extremely unlikely. And just looking at the macro, again, you can kind of see where this is the first bottom, the chop, and now the double peak move, the double peak move, and now we're coming back down for the second bottom. We'd be looking for the second bottom, the tri peak, the third bottom, and then the uptrend to January 15th. I like this scenario more, but I'm not ruling out the other one. Not yet, at least. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the levels here, they're all the same. The yellow, the green, the orange, the blue, where you drop down to the flat portion is the same level. Uh, granted, we came a little bit lower than the previous flat portion, but you know, the peak of this macro was also a little bit higher than the previous. And going forward, the next peak will be higher. And the FIB hasn't changed. The price target is still $1,400. Um, and that's that. With all that being said, coming back to the January 15th macro chart, uh, here it is. And so really quickly, again, you have your, your first peak, pull back W, second peak, the flag, the downtrend, four touches on the top, the knife, and the V. So the macro V is really just the flat portion. That's the macro V. This is the macro V of the last, the last macro, which takes you into a new macro, the squeeze, which is what we're playing out again. And again, you know, if it, it makes sense to that trend line I was running, that yellow trend I was running right across the top here, um, it's really just this. It's the top of the flat portion. You're coming up to that range, keep rejecting it until you break through it and that's into a new macro. So that's really what we're looking for now where this would have been the second peak here, and now we're coming back down to our second bottom, then looking for the tri peak, then looking for the third bottom, and then looking for the squeeze. All right, with all that being said, in my opinion, um, and this is just me, I said, it on my, I said it on my live stream the other day, I've been saying it in Discord, I think that Discord's pretty much on the same page right now, where we're just not gonna touch AMC for the time being, um, contract wise, there's really no point, especially if the scenario is this one where we're pretty much range bound here, $7 to $12 until we squeeze, not really, you know, not really doing any good trying to play that. We're kind of on the same page though, where, and this is not financial advice. We're just going to play spy because the macro, the macro here, um, is perfect. You know, the symmetry is perfect. The, the 409 bottom I called out was fucking spot on. 409 up to 441 in two fucking weeks. Uh, we are looking for downside now. So here's SPY's macro. It's the, it's the all time highs on SPY, the descending broadening wedge, and you're just ping ponging up and down in this wedge until you eventually break out, retest, and then you get your bull run. Um, up to 460, which was the symmetrical equivalent that you're seeing right here. And then you pull back into another descending broadening wedge and it's playing out the same exact way. And we are now looking for this landmark here. So we're looking for a pullback and then we're looking for a break to the upside of this wedge and a retest and then another bull run. That bull run, once we come down here to the bottom of the wedge, 
back up to the top, we'll break out of this, we'll retest on it, and that will be the bull run to all time highs for SPY. Um, and that will also align with probably everything else. Probably the rest of the market, the meme basket, uh, will be synced up when SPY is making its climb to all time highs, AMC will be as well. Uh, projection wise for this bottom, which is roughly 400 to 405, uh, I can zoom in on the side by side now. This would probably be taking us into early to mid December, looking for a, a pretty nasty pullback on SPY to 400 to 405 dollars in the descending broadening wedge. This is the all time highs descending broadening wedge and the 460 descending broadening wedge. So the, the cup here before you get the run to all time highs, the cup before you get the run to all time highs, really it's you know 460. Uh, the downtrend, your first bounce off, your first rejection, first bounce off, first rejection, second bounce off, second bounce off, reject, you don't come all the way up. Uh, third bounce off, you actually wick through it and then back up to the trend. And now we would be looking for this pullback here, which would be taking SPY to 400 to 405 dollars, which would then be the bottom on the market. Then looking for an uptrend to break the descending broadening wedge, retest it, and that would take SPY to its all time high run. When this trend line from the 460 high breaks, so here is the 460 high. Now another descending broadening wedge. You know, spy's macro. Spy's macro is very easy to track. Um, the descending broadening wedge. The down. The downside of spy is just the descending broadening wedge. So again, looking for the downside to 405, and then the breakout, the retest, and then the bull run to all-time highs for spy will more than likely align with everything else, uh, which would probably be somewhere around that January, February. Uh, range, which is what I was talking about in the best case scenario for AMC, where we would be coming down from the second peak here to our second bottom, looking for the, the second bottom, the tri peak, the third bottom now uh, would probably take us all November, all December into January. Um, January, February, we would probably be starting the uptrend here off the third bottom, looking for the January 15th break. And again, uh, around that time, January, February, SPY will be breaking this wedge. So we're looking for a pullback. It's going to be nasty. People are going to be screaming market crash, we, but we'll know why, as we always do. We'll know why. Coming out to 400 to 405, testing the bottom of the wedge one more time before you get the uptrend, the breakout retest, and the bull run. I expect all of this to play out much faster as most of the whole downtrend here played out much faster as well. Um, the upside, the breakout retest, and the bull run will likely play out faster. I expect this to be a little bit more vertical than this was. So that would likely be lining up with January, February 2024. So I think that's it for the video. Um, I hope this you know, made things pretty clear for everyone. Um, you know, this, this was not an unforeseen event. It was a scenario that I projected three months ago. Um, yeah, I mean, I projected this three months ago. It was a worst case scenario. I thought it was unlikely, uh, but here we are. So all we can do is continue to track. Honestly, it looks good. Uh, the double peak move here, double peak move here, hoping this pullback we're seeing now is actually the pullback to the second bottom and that we're not just in the first iteration of W here. Um, I don't think we are, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. So for now, that's it. I will catch you guys with some updates next week. Um, they're probably not going to be as frequent as they've been as of late, just because, you know, we have time. So like I said, this, the break to the upside will not come out of nowhere. We'll be tracking it the whole time. We'll be tracking it January 15th, end of the day, looking for a break. That is where we'll be looking for the break. Um, for now, we have to just let all the, the, the echo part of this play out, the choppy sideways bullshit that we saw in September. You know, we're gonna be looking for that again, pretty much essentially. So that being said, I'll catch you guys with some updates next week.